8,000 plus in this room. We only have two board councils. We don't have 10. We don't have four. We don't have 200. It's two. So they did something that's above and beyond all their peers. Because you can't get a board council with only a big leg. You need to promote 20 direct marketing directors. You cannot be a board council if one leg gets 2,000 licensed agents and you only do 500 outside of that. No. You can't do it if a leg does 2,000 recruits and you do 200 outside of that. It's got to be a very balanced business. And these guys were able to do it. So the first person I'm going to bring up, we were earlier looking at some old pictures and I was looking at a picture at the first big event that we had and Jose sit standing there giving a speech and I'll never forget when we started PHP, it was only him and Marlene and everybody else said, we don't think PHP is going to make it. They didn't come with us. It was only Jose and Marlene, only. And they went from there to nobody thought these guys, every time I would ask a question, tell me the top five in PHP. Their name wasn't in it. Tell me the top five in PHP. Well, you know, Jose's a personal producer. Tell me the top five in PHP. And then they went from there to last night, possibly the craziest, most competitive team last night in President's Club meeting, which front row was nuts, to not become a board councils. And I said, rather than them speaking to you, I would much rather ask some questions. Make some noise to one of two board councils in the company, the leader of TGA, Jose and Marlene Gaetan. That's loud, man. All right, grab seats, TGA. Love it. So uh, uh, first of all, before we get into it, before we get into a list of questions, let, let me have everybody grab seats, please. Before we get into the questions, uh, for you, what, what are you thinking about right now? You're in this moment. You're seeing all this stuff take place. You were there when the company got started. You were at the meeting September 23rd where we have the meeting at Lulu's. You were one of the seven uh, uh, leaders at Lulu's when we went back to the office and we had the meeting till 3.30 and we started PHP. And it's grown to what it is today. What are you guys thinking in this moment right now? Sorry, my babe. I'm just thinking it feels, it feels surreal. It feels like a dream. Somebody asked me, what does it feel like when people stop you and want to take a picture? <clears throat> I, my first initial reaction is it's, it's uncomfortable. Like, you know, sometimes I walk faster and I don't make eye contact because it's a weird feeling, but I just wish I could just transmit the emotion and I just wish people could know that, you know, I remember coming here to my first event as a 23-year-old, this was 10 years ago, and I sat in the back and I remember I was the first one in line. I slept on the floor the entire night I didn't sleep for three days, and I was the one that was cheering and, you know, just excited and just thinking one day, one day, one day, and to just get the chance to have our CEO says, we want to interview you on stage. I mean, this is the host of Valuetainment. I mean, he interviews celebrities and CEOs and multi-billionaires and influencers, and to just have the privilege, it's, it's such an honor. It's a dream come true. Awesome. Gaetan, how about yourself? Man. They said we were going to make it, and here we are. Uh, it's a dream, man. It just reminds me that you got to, the dreams do come true. I'll never forget we had our, our Christmas party December 2009, I believe it was. It was 200 of us, 200 of us. And, and then the announcements you made about uh, the 1-800 number, and here we are starting the company from scratch, and all we did is 
is uh, follow a vision, a dream, and we worked our butts behind it. And, and to see this is freaking awesome, and I'm excited, um, and I just think we're just getting warmed up. And it's just a, it's just a dream coming true, and it's just the beginning, man. What's so I'm the excited. feeling, though? Is it a peace of mind? Is it a dream? Is it, is it what, what mixed emotions is there? What are you feeling right now? Well, I'll tell you, the last 24 hours, man, I've cried, I've laughed, I've been pissed off. Uh, there was almost a, a big gang fight last night. A rumble. I mean, a rumble. There's so many different emotions, man. When I, when I saw the opening video that you guys did, oh, my God. And I see the images of all of our guys and the beginning coming together in the office when we didn't have gas money, we didn't have, you know, places to do BOM. I got really emotional, man. I was just like, wow, we've been through so much. And it's, it's all been worth it, man. So just a number of emotions go through my mind. I love that. Why don't, why don't we go back? You know, again, the, 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 the famous question here. If I was in high school with Jose Gaetan, who was Jose Gaetan? <laughs> oh, my gosh. Okay. Uh, I was in a library every day. Um, Somehow we believe you, obviously. Yeah. Of course. Man, what was I? I, I was, I was the, the guy who played basketball. I was the guy that was an average student. I was a guy that didn't really hang out with the crowd. I was a guy that, um, that was a big dreamer. I was an average student. I was a guy that had your back when we played sports. I was the first guy to go out there and, and face any kind of competition that we had. I was that guy. That, that's, that's, that, was, that was me, man. How about you, Marlene? It's funny because I ran into a friend that I went to high school with yesterday and they came here uh, to, to do the sign-in on Monday and her husband, we went to high school together, he says, I remember Marlene, she was always the, she was the only girl in high school walking down the hall in high heels and red lipstick. Like, you were always like the teacher, like the adult in the room and I think that was probably what I would be remembered for. I was probably the one that was hanging out with the teachers. I was in the school newspaper. I was the one that was, you know, just chasing the dreams and let's make a difference. And that's kind of what moved me. So were you the diva or were you more like, we're going to go change the world? No, I was more of like the, the Joan of Arc, let's change the world. But I did like the heels. Yeah. You did like the heels? Oh, yeah. Did people think you were, did people think you were weird or no? Yes. In what ways? Like, what, how did they think you were weird? Because uh, I, don't, I don't think I fit in. I mean, everybody was, you know, talking about high school stuff. And I remember just thinking, I can't wait to get out of here. Like, I want to go do bigger things. I want to go do something else. So in that sense, yes, I did not fit in. When you, when you got into the business, both of you guys, and you kind of started uh, working in the financial industry, the first time you guys, uh, Jose, first time you saw Marlene, what happened there? Because I remember we were standing in the back, your arms are crossed, you're trying to ask me about her. W what happened the first time you saw Marlene? Why don't you tell us a little bit? Well, you know, that thing we call FaceTime in the office, it kind of works if you're single. So if you keep on showing up. So I remember, you know, seeing her walk in for the first time. And at, at that moment, you know, you got music, you got a lot of people. At that moment, it's like the scene of a movie, everything just stopped. She floated towards me. I floated towards her, right? She's not lying. Kissed me. In my mind, that all happened, right? Uh, I noticed her right away, and she was, just, she was just stunning. She was beautiful, and it took my breath away, and I said, I got to get to know who she is. And, uh, and, and that's it. And then we had the best matchmaker named PBD, and, <laughs> and things happened. So, How about yourself? Um, maybe that happened in his mind because he didn't introduce himself. I didn't know who he was until we were in a class and Patrick is talking about the exchange principles. And Patrick says, if you want to learn the business, you got to find somebody to teach you, a mentor. I suggest you take somebody out to lunch or coffee. And he wrote on the board, Jose Gaitan. So when the class ended, I walked out of the class and I said, who's this Jose Gaitan? And they said, that guy. So I walked up to him and I said, can I take you to coffee? And he said. So let me check my schedule. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm open. And that's the first time, that's the first time we, we talked. But when, the moment I fell in love with him was um, we were just friends. We went to Dan Salsa. This was just a group of coworkers. And I remember the music playing. And my sister was there. She was a, a witness to this. And the moment he put his hand around my waist, that was it. I knew I was going to marry this guy. Got it. Put your hands around her waist. Not game over. 
So obviously, you know, most people know your relationship uh, is one of a kind because according to everybody who knows them, you guys have never had arguments before. How did you guys have a relationship where there was no fights and issues at all? Like, what's, what's the secret to your relationship? <laughs> yeah, that's not the case, right? Uh, no, man, we're just like everything else. I mean, there have been so many moments where uh, we were, where those tough times and arguments really make us, uh, made us stronger. So, I mean, through the, through the last 12 years we've known each other, six years we've been married, um, we've had a lot of arguments, man, a lot of differences, but we managed to work through them and mature and with the right environment, right mentors like you and your wife, and uh, being able to just get better and stronger and process things and not, uh, not jump to conclusions uh, like any other couple, but, but we've, uh, we've had our battles. I always say, don't worry if you're fighting. Worry when you're no longer fighting because yeah. the making up part is what's fun. So yeah. we fight about every day, every day. <laughs> you, make up to, yeah. you fight every day. Break up to make up. There you go. And uh, studies have shown that the more you fight, the more babies you make. That's so right. it, it, it seems like fighting equals babies, right? It's like Chris and Mary got a lead on us, huh? They fight the most, they apparently. They fight the most, Chris and Mary. And, and after Jordan Peterson talking about 10 babies, ten I have babies. a feeling Alejandro's going to be the first to 10. <laughs> I got it this, right? What do you say? <laughs> you get the first to ten. NPC club. Yeah. So, so Marlene, let me ask you a different question. Let me ask you a different question. When I think about you guys, um, I think about a few different moments we had together. One with you when the two of you guys broke up and you came to Woodland Hills, Jose's downstairs, he's emotional, you're upstairs in Woodland Hills, you and I have two and a half hours of conversations together. Where were you guys at at that stage of your life between the two of you and business when we had that conversation? Wow. We were um, at the lowest point. I mean, I remember just fighting every day. I mean, we're trying to build a business. There's just no money coming in. And definitely people say, you guys are happier now. Yes, because money makes life a little bit easier. You have more options. Uh -huh. And we would fight over the dumbest, um, over the dumbest things. You know, like not having gas money or not, you know, calling the, the right person to follow up. And I think we just, we just didn't have experience. And we definitely didn't have any communication skills. I certainly didn't have any communication skills. And I remember just the influence. I remember thinking, I'm going to become a millionaire in six months. My, I, I would have probably said boards council my first month. And, and then you realize there's a price to be paid. It's not easy. It's painful, you gotta be broken down. And at the time, my family was extremely negative. And I remember thinking, oh my God, my family, they hate him. I mean, we got married in a drive-through in Vegas because if there was my family, though, there would have been the one protesting saying, I object. <laughs> and sometimes it does get to you. You know, you do question it. And I remember um, somebody very close to me, we went to sushi and they said, man, and you know what they say, it starts with flattery. They said, man, you work really hard. I'm like, yeah, I'm a hard worker. And they, and I remember the next line was, you're a really good recruiter. I'm like, yeah, I'm pretty good. And I the next line was, I bet if you worked like for Disney or something, you'd probably make like 200K in benefits. And that was it. And it was just that one comment. And I went to sleep. I couldn't sleep that night. I was thinking benefits. I mean, I've never had benefits. That sounds nice. I started Googling, like, how much do these people make? And it's so crazy how just something so small can put just the seed of doubt. And I think that seed, that seed just, just grew. And we were at such a low point, I was done. And I think, I, I, in my mind, I was mentally like, nope, forget it. I'm going to go back to real estate. I was making more money. I'm done. I'm done with everything. And I was done with, with, you know, with, with Gaitan too. I was like, this is too hard. We're fighting every day. Why are we broke? You know, I'm young. I should be doing other things. And I remember I had a conversation with Patrick. And I told Patrick, Pat, I, I cannot do this. I'm going to just do my own thing. And Patrick looked at me and he said, Marlene, you're not going to find another guy better than this. And I remember I looked at him and I said, I don't know if I believe in him. I said, do you believe in him? 
and he says, you have no idea how much I believe in him. I borrowed his belief at that moment. And that's what made me realize, you know what, he's, he's right. He's a good guy. He's a really good guy. And that's why we're still together. You know, you said something. Uh, Martin calls me the other day. Uh, they had an issue. Why don't you talk about what happened the other day with the dogs and, and how that made you look at him as a man? So we, we, we got a, a new member of the family, Coco, Coco Chanel, little dog. And the dog is barking, you know, little guy always barking at the neighbor's dog, a big pit bull. Well, we didn't know the pit bull made a hole under the fence. So every morning they go greet each other and do their doggy, you know, greetings. And so the next morning Coco is barking. Well, the pit bull went under the fence and grabbed him by the head pulled him into the neighbor's yard and is just ripping him to shreds. And you can hear the dog, rawr, rawr, rawr. and my husband, the week before, he twisted his ankle, almost had a brace, and the doctor said, no movement. Okay, this was the week before. Somehow, he jumps like Superman, two fences, and he stops the dog attack. And at that moment, I had to, I, I, I was so impressed because me, I cannot see blood. I almost passed out. Like my knees were weak. I, I mean, I was ready to pass out at the, at that moment. Uh, but to just see him, it was, it just made me feel so safe. And I messaged Patrick and I said, I have to just tell you how, how impressed I am with my husband because when, you know, stuff hits the fan, I always know that, that he's going to keep us all safe. How do you feel? How do you feel you're hearing this? Oh, it's, it's awesome, man. I mean, yeah. Well, Coco's recovering. He survived, yeah. Survived. It was bad. I mean, oh, my gosh. You can imagine. By the way, I called him. He couldn't even right. talk. Yeah. He's like, I can't talk right now. He was just emotional when I called him. And this is like her dog. I'm like, sometimes like, this is your dog, babe, right? <laughs> um, but I got connected with the dog. But um, no, he's good. But no, I feel amazing to be able to, to, to provide support and protect, do whatever I got to do. But um, you mentioned about you know, what we went through, I think lack of clarity, lack of commitment, when you're going through stuff and you're tested, will, will keep you very delusional. And, and when you're not committed, you, you, you feel very easy, so easy to let go. The moment we decided to get engaged, got engaged without a ring, by the way, got engaged, uh, that moment we just committed to each other. Everything, everything changed in our business. So I think for those people that are going through stuff, lack of clarity, lack of commitment can make things so easy to just let go. So let me ask you a different question here. Um, when you decided to jump on board with PHP, when we got started, we had nothing to sell. You and I are in a parking lot one time. You're a guy that can typically hold it together. Yeah. You break down and I'm like, what's on your mind? And you didn't have 20 bucks to pay for gas. And the woman you loved the most at the time was your mother because your mother was an entrepreneur and you saw how yeah. much how hard she worked with the four kids and you being the youngest one the the house you had gotten her she lost yeah and everybody there is saying you know it's your fault you should have never done if you wouldn't have gone with pat if you wouldn't have started this company with these guys mom would not lost the house and i remember i looked at you you just couldn't hold yourself Gaetan, in that moment how were you feeling about yourself with all the situations that was going on Oh, man, I mean, I was, uh, I just felt so much pressure, so much weight on my shoulders thinking, can I get through this? How can I get through all of this stuff when I have all this pressure financially, family not supporting you, uh, rumors, you know, you're, you know, you're making some bad choices. Um, it was a lot of pressure. So, I mean, I'm, when you, you and I, we've had many moments where we've, we've I've broken down in front of you, so... Uh, I, just, I just broke down, but again, my wife said that his belief at the time, she, she got that belief. Your belief in me, the vision of where we're going about what's doing the impossible and coming through and knowing this is all just a test, that gave me just peace. It gave me peace because sometimes uh, as, you're doing, as you're building something, uh, it's, it's somebody else's belief in you that matters the most. And you always believed and poured into us 
And that gave us so much more strength to keep on going. So I knew things were going to be okay. Plus, we're a little crazy. We're a little bit kind of, we're dreamers. We're risk takers. And I just knew that I wanted to work for it. And today, you know, everything's been, you know, completely the opposite where my mother-in-law, my father-in-law retired. My mom's retired. They traveled the world with us. So it was all a price worth paying. Let me, let me ask you, one thing I watch uh, 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 from you is I don't think you have a bone of, pff, what's the word I'm looking for? I don't think you have a bone of envy or negative vengeance in you. I think you want to prove a point and you want to compete. But everything that was done, the amount of love you have for Maurice, Erica, Roy, your family, Letty, everybody is such a great example you set for everybody else. Because you're so crazy about your family, you will not let anybody say anything about them. Right. Where does that come from? I think, I think you know, we all have different gifts from God, man. And I think uh, he gave me the gift of, of, of composure, uh, poise, of not get, getting so rattled. So I kinda, I'm, I'm pretty good with that. Uh, I think we all have different gifts. Some people um, have other gifts. And I've been operating like that for a long time. And uh, I, I, I don't want to... I think the moment you give, you give that away, you give your power away to envy, to, to, to jealousy, to greed, when you give that away, you lose so much strength and power. So I want to keep that. Mm. I don't want to lose that. Yeah. If I give that away, there's less of me. So I, I'm very conscious of that, and that's how I've been operating for a while. Yeah. yeah. Knowing him and seeing him, what do you think about when you see how he handles those situations? Um, I think one of the things that really attracted me to him was he just believed in himself so much. You know, um, he just, he was such a dreamer, but he really thought he was God's gift to the planet. Even when we were so broke, even when we had nothing going on, I mean, he thought so highly of himself, and I was attracted to that because I knew that he wanted to be somebody. And you know what, Patrick, you know what you said, it's, it's true. I mean, he doesn't have a bone of, of envy or nothing. I remember when PHP got started, there was, um, this is in the beginning of our business when we are so broke, so broke. And you know, I'm not gonna say the name, right? We have a new person in the company, you know, handling our commissions, brilliant person. And at the times we didn't have systems, so we were expecting a pay cycle of like $800. And somehow there was an error and another zero was added, so it was $8,000. And I remember looking at it, and back then, I mean, that, that was $8,000 then would have solved every single one of our problems. And I remember I wanted to see what he was gonna do because I'm a big believer that, you know, if you lie on the little things, you lie on the big things. So I pretended not to see it. And I stepped back and I was looking at him watching his computer and I was, I really wanted to see what he was going to do. And he's looking at the computer and he types back an email and then he stepped away. So of course I ran to the computer because I wanted to see what he typed. And he replied, you accidentally overpaid us. That's when he won me over because I realized he, he just had character. I think, yeah, I think what Rawls says at that time, it, it was, we, we were going to fix it anyways. We were going <laughs> to fix it anyways, right? <laughs> It was good to see that, but so yeah. the name comes out. Where is Moral? I got to okay. see Moral afterwards. It's gotta, okay, Jose. Th th this is a serious question for me. You've had multiple nicknames I've given you. You've had Rico Suave. <laughs> you've had uh, uh, you've had uh, uh, what's the second one? Sea Biscuit, the horse, and then you had Mexican JFK. Which one's your favorite? <laughs> it depends what video you play of me. That's right. Right? Yes. So some videos that come out, then I, you know that we have, but. Uh, man, it's got to be probably Sea Biscuit, man. The story of the underdog and giving that underdog a shot to go out there and prove everybody wrong. One of my biggest drivers, having chip on my shoulder. The biggest advice I think I think Mario had asked, what's the biggest best advice someone told you to, to that allowed you to reach success? The biggest advice was simply a statement, and the statement was, "You'll never make it in business." And I'll never forget that. So many times I think Sea Biscuit, they looked at Sea Biscuit, mm. and would never make it. 
and I can relate. And now we've proven a lot of the haters wrong that we made it. Yeah, we were on a conference call once. We were on a conference call once, and this person on the conference call said, if you can remind all of us what he said to you on the conference call. Conference call by someone that uh, you would run, you used to run with in, a, in another company, and that was my former upline. I met Patrick. I wanted to work with him because you're a lot local to me, so we get on a conference call, and I haven't made any money. I'm brand new. Just got my license after eight months. Haven't done anything, and uh, I want to work with Patrick, and this person who hardly has no relationship with me at all says, I am not going to sign this form no matter what you do. And no matter what, even if you are working with him or with me, Jose, you will never make it in this business. And that's the best thing he told me, by the way. Because now, years later, I believe every single measurable category, this guy has been in business for 20, 25 years, we've beaten every single category he's in right now. So. Marlene, uh, uh, with you, uh, when you and I had a conversation last million point Beach, a lot of people look at these guys right now. They hold the record, 324, 325 recruits in a month. I think you guys did that in November of last year. And you did 288,000 points minus a big case. If we put it as volume, you guys have the biggest month base shop-wise without one big case, 288,000 points. But a year ago, that wasn't the case. Marlene, what did you have to, when we had that conversation at uh, Lake Tahoe in our, in our room with myself, you, and Jennifer, where were you at and what some of this, I don't want, you know, I'm not saying to go into all the details, but what were some of the things that you had to recreate yourself to be where you guys are today? I was in a very dark place. I was in a place where I was very frustrated. I was very unhappy. Um, I remember thinking, I want to conquer the world and... Somewhere along the way, I just, I don't know, I, I, I lost my way. And I was stagnant for a while, and I was seeing other people growing, and I remember thinking, what's wrong with me? What's wrong with me? I got to get it together. I got to get it together. And I remember also thinking, I, I, one of my affirmations, you know, with the team is, when one wins, we all win. And I say, one of the, I, I cannot stand, sorry, losers. I cannot stand people that are what we call in Spanish envidiosos. I said, I'm never going to be that person. I just got to work on me. But I was in a very broken place. And I went to the only, the only couple that I could really go to and trust. And that's, you know, Patrick and Jennifer. And I remember just breaking down and just saying, you know, like, this is where I'm at. And I didn't ask for help sooner because I have a big ego, you know? When you have a big ego, you, you're not supposed to be vulnerable. You're not supposed to be this person. And, and I remember breaking down and just saying, I just, I want to change. I want to change. At the time I was going through some postpartum depression and, and uh, I don't know if that's very, very common, but you know, for me, it was, it was very tough. And Patrick says, you should go talk to a therapist. And immediately I said, no, what are you talking about? Like, we're Mexican, we don't do that. <laughs> we don't go tell other people our problems. And Patrick says, I don't know a high performer that doesn't have a group of people that, that help them get to the next level. And I actually read Ego is the Enemy. And it was the second time reading it and it was very, it was very different for me. I realized he was right. You know, I did, I, I did need help. And, and you know what? I only saw the therapist for a few sessions. And the therapist said, you're stagnant because you, you can't. He said, you don't believe that you deserve to win because of your guilt. And at that moment, I realized that... <laughs> I kept, I kept having these thoughts in my head that were not mine. I knew that. But I remember thinking, God, I need your help. I have to get over this. I forgive myself. And the therapist says, maybe it's just a chemical imbalance. And I remember I did blood work for the first time. And I just realized, maybe, maybe it really is just that. And that session took such a weight off my shoulders because in that instant, I realized that there's grace and that I wanted to reinvent myself. 
like never before. I, I wanted, I had this obsession of, you know, who I wanted to be, and I wanted to be bigger, and I wanted to be better, and I wanted to be an example for, for women everywhere that it doesn't matter where you're at. It only matters where, where you're going and who you want to be. And right now, I have to tell you, I'm in such a good place. And I don't think I've ever had this much mm. clarity. <laughs> and of course, uh, just the, the, the support of my husband, of course, but I don't think we've ever been more excited. And I think I feel, I feel that we deserve to win. And I feel that, that we have this, this, this weight, this responsibility that we're, we're, we're chosen, we're, we're, we're called upon to, to lead other people. And I don't take that lightly. You know, to me, it's, it's, we have to come through because when I see the, the Aguilar family and I see Erica and Ricky making $200,000 in a month, to me, it's just, it's, it's such a blessing, but it's also paranoia. You know, he's the calm one. I'm the paranoid one. I'm the one that always has anxiety thinking, no, I need to do more. I, I need to do, I need to pretend I don't have anything. And Lorena, my assistant, she always asks, did you see your cycle? Did you see your cycle? She's like, you made $40,000 this cycle. And, and truth be told, I never check in. I never check the cycle. I never, I never, he, he looks at it. You know, the accountant looks at it. I never see it. I want to pretend I have absolutely nothing. So, between how many people in your organization made over $100,000 just this month? Uh, right now, the top five, I think number five is Trujillo, who made $51,000. Number five. There's 23. Alejandro Aguilar. By the way, how old is Trujillo? He's 23 years old. 23 years old. At, uh, 22. Keep on aging then. 22. Uh, Alejandro Aguilar is at $65,000 for the month. It's number four. Number three, Del Toro is, I just updated, $120,000 of income this $120, month. $120,000. Number, number two. Number two is us at $149,000. And number one is Ricky and Erica, $200,000. $200,000 of income. Right. <laughs> so, you know, you can, you can tell somebody winning when it's not just you winning. And, and the great thing about this is this month, you're not even the number one earner. You made 149, somebody else made 200. <laughs> so it's not like other people don't have the opportunity to make more money than you guys are making. Yeah, that's the beautiful that's right. part about the business. But the, uh, Marlene, I think what a lot of people would like to know here is, uh, I'm certain a lot of people want to know this. This may be a technical question, so I know you don't like technical oh, questions, yes. but... Don't ask me about fire. No, it's going to be a very technical question here. <laughs> so between you, your brother and sister, you guys made $250,000 no, $270, this month. Yourself, Hector, and Erica. Yes. What the hell did your dad cook for you guys? Like what... <laughs> How many of you guys would like to know the food? Because maybe there's some special spice they're putting in this Mexican food. So what, what, what did you guys eat? Like, what was going on there? Because all three of you guys are crazy competitors. The best ceviche. <laughs> the best ceviche in the house. You know, my, my, my earliest, earliest, you know, I don't know if this is live or if I'm supposed to say this, but my earliest childhood memory being three years old was crossing the border. And I remember my dad was holding me and we crossed the river. And I remember it was at nighttime because I remember looking at the moon and I remember being wet. So when they say mojados, like I get it, okay? <laughs> and I remember just crossing the border and, you know, arriving and, and the next day and thinking, why does everybody speak so funny? And my mother, she was a housekeeper her whole life. My dad always had two and three jobs. And they worked so hard. And when people say, you guys work nonstop, because that's what we saw. And we never had this you know, victim mentality of we don't see them. We just felt this, this, this gratefulness of just, just thanking, just, just so just mm. thankful, thankful. And when we go back to Mexico and you know, they, they show us, this is where you would be living. I mean, we just, we cannot help but be grateful. So I think we just, we owe it to them to, to do big things. And I think all of my siblings, we all feel the same way. I love that. I love that. And we're going to hear from them later on. It's going to be great. 
Just so you know, when she gets up, she's going to talk a lot of smack about me. She's very good at doing that, but she does it in the nicest way possible. So tell us, what's next for you? What's next? Now you're here. You, you got what you got going on right now. You, you're doing pretty good for yourself business-wise. You got yourself a nice blue Lambo. You're getting ready to make some moves to a different city. What are you guys thinking about next? What's the vision for you next? We just want to be uh, counted on. We want to be able to come through, be the backbone for the company, be able to, to lead by example. And we said being a 50% team, you called a new vision yesterday with the numbers. We want to have 50% of that be the 40-minute hour guy or the team. And just come through for the company. Make sure that we're in the history books and everything that you said, uh, the vision you painted, the, the accomplishments, history, we, we, we're going to be there. We want to make sure that it comes true. We're a part of that. We started the company. Now we want to make sure that we, we write the last chapters of that and it comes true. That's what's on my mind. Marlene, how about yourself? What are you thinking? One of, the, one of our, our affirmations to the team is, we expect you to be better than us. We expect you to be bigger. I mean, that's what we tell our kids, right? We expect you to do better than us. And for us, it's extremely important to set a really good example. But, you know, it's our, our dream is just to have people that are bigger than us and better than us. And it's not about being a king for us. It's about being a king maker. And I think that is, uh, that is our obsession. My, my second obsession, and this is my life obsession, is to win a Nobel Peace Prize. So I'm going to take my ownership money and, and use that. And to me, that would be just validation that I was put on this earth to, to do something special. So You know, it's crazy. First, thing, first time I met uh, Marlene, she said this when she was 23 years old. And I said, she's absolutely off a little bit, and I love it. And then she said it again. The next time I put her on stage for two minutes, she said it again. Then the next time I put her on stage at a convention, she said it again. She has probably said that, honestly, I don't even know, 500 times, 1,000 times. I've heard you say it so many times. It's yeah. insane. So when you say it so many times, you believe it 100%. Again, give it up to Jose Marlene Gaetan for being Thank the second you. board Thank counsel you. of the company. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Phenomenal job.